What's up guys, welcome to Peak Performance. Today on the channel, we're gonna be putting in a new Willwood 15 16 manual master cylinder into my 65 Mustang. We got my pops here helping us to work on it today. And uh, let's see how far we can get. So with this setup, it comes with the new aluminum master cylinder. You also get uh, Willwood's adjustable um, brake. I can't even think of the word now, but the adjustable uh, distribution block or proportioning valve, right? So we are right now the car has four wheel drum brakes. We are going to be switching it to front discs, uh, but today we're just going to focus on getting the uh, master cylinder in. We're actually still waiting for the new front disc brake conversion to come in. I ended up ordering uh, their kit that's specific for a '65 Mustang. It's a 12 inch uh, rotor with a six piston caliper, drilled and slotted, the whole deal with a uh, red caliper. So it's going to look pretty awesome. Uh, so. Wish us luck, we're already running into a few little weird deals and we've got to get a few things off that I'll show you right now. All right, so on our Mustang here, you can see we've got uh, right here, let me see if I can point to it. So right here, we've got our stock master cylinder that we'll be removing. Sorry, it's not coming in too clear with the light, but uh, the only problem we have on this Mustang, since they've already swapped in a five liter EFI, this is where they actually placed the uh, computer uh, looks like maybe a little fuse box or something as well. So I don't want to move this permanently. I'd like to just kind of move it out of the way and then hopefully be able to move it back. We may run into some issues because on this side, kind of where all this stuff is resting, is where our new proportioning valve is going to go, the Willwood proportioning valve. Um, the factory one is there right now. It's just kind of buried underneath. Um, the other option is on the Willwood. We can put the proportioning valve on this side where there is more room. So that may be an option. But I think what we need to do first is... Uh, be able to get this uh, brace off here just to make more room and then we can hopefully try to disconnect some stuff and maybe move all this PCM uh, computer stuff out of the way to give us some room to work so hopefully <laughs> fingers crossed it's not too big of a deal but I did get some uh, line wrenches some crow's foot line wrenches some regular line wrenches today from our friends at Harbor Freight new ratchet so a whole bunch of stuff so uh, hopefully all this stuff will come out. I mean, if not, whatever, no big deal. I'll cut it out and we'll just end up, you know, reflaring lines or putting in some new lines. Whatever we got to do, right? We're going to get it done. So uh, it doesn't look too hard. We'll see. So let's start taking all this crap apart and then we'll come back uh, when we're ready to start messing with the computer stuff. All right. So, so far we got the export brace off, which kind of sucked because all of these little studs were spinning. So that was fantastic. But we finally got them out by jamming some screwdrivers to hold the heads of the nuts. Got that out. Uh, I already got the clip. There's a clip on the inside where the uh, pedal is for the brake pedal and then also the brake pedal switch. That was super simple. Just a simple clip and then you can kind of pop it all out. And then now we're actually disconnecting uh, this clip from the computer. Then hopefully we can kind of move this whole big wire, just kind of tuck it over here so we can have more access to get to the four bolts for the master cylinder. We also have to undo, of course, still the uh, fittings for the brake lines. And then we can hopefully pop this whole assembly out. And then boom, it's going to be time to start putting in all this Willwood awesomeness, which is going to be cool. Right, Pops? What do you think? Trying to see how this clip comes out. All right, so far we were able to uh, get the computer moved out of the way. It was actually just kind of sitting in there, oh, and it was just issues. forced. It was just forced against the wall with the uh, some of the brake lines. So we pushed all that. Two out of the three brake lines we uh, we were able to get off without breaking them. So we've only got to kind of make one little flare and fix up that brake line. And uh, right now, Pops is just trying to get out the four bolts for the master cylinder. So I have an issue with that bottom one. Why is it hard to get to? It ain't the right size. Uh oh. Yep. All right, guys. So after a couple of bolts, we're able to get the old master cylinder out of this thing pretty easily. Not too much trouble, I guess. But uh, you can see this thing's actually leaking. So uh, the seal shot, obviously, this doesn't even look. I don't know if this is OEM or it's been replaced in the last 50 something years, but. Now it's time to put in a new one. All right, so here's a little side-by-side -side comparison of the uh, factory version 
So you can see kind of how much longer and how much more capacity we're gonna have with the Willwood. This is also a dual chamber setup. So this is actually made for disc and disc where this is just feeding all four drum brakes. Now the event that uh, this did fail and you only have one reservoir, you would lose all brakes. Where with the newer stuff with dual reservoirs, if one or the other goes, at least you'd still have half your brakes left, right? So a lot safer. Uh, even this Willwood, although it looks much more you know monstrous and bigger, it's actually lighter you know just holding this old cast iron piece up uh so a little bit of weight savings that's always good too so pretty cool all right guys so here's the mock-up of our whole setup right now so we've just got this kind of just you know lightly in here nothing's bolted down this is going to be the residual valve since we're still going to have rear drum brakes we need to have this 10 psi residual valve to keep some pressure on the rear uh sorry rear drums um, and then once we switch over to disc this will have to come back out so the way i plumbed it i'm hoping it'll be pretty easy to pop it back out um, once we're ready to swap to disc eventually um, and then we just have the two fronts here that we'll just plug in plug that one in and we're done so right now what we're doing is just uh We've got to finish doing a little flare and kind of bend the tube and get it all in the right spot and everything. And then we'll get all that in, um, kind of in the right spot. And then we'll plug all this back in. So a lot of little tedious work, nothing super hard. Just, uh, you know, you got to take your time with it and make sure everything kind of lines up. I think the hardest part for us is going to be probably getting access to this once this is in there to be able to tighten this. So it's going to be interesting. And then I'll uh, we'll get the pedal all buttoned back up and then this job will be done well we also have to bleed it um, but this will be done but i don't think i'm going to try to drive the car or anything like that um, i'm still waiting the next week or two i should have the front brakes that come in so i'll probably get new front brakes we noticed that this uh shock over here is um not working so well so probably two new shocks since i'm already going to be up in the wheel well anyway all right, guys, so it's about 8 o'clock. We've been working on this thing for a while. We had to make a couple trips uh, to the parts store, so that kind of slowed us down. But we do have the new master cylinder in. Uh, we did just use the uh, bracket that came with it for this side. It would have been nice to kind of have the other bracket where it put this uh, distribution block on this side because uh, for our application, there's a lot more room. And once all this computer comes back in here, it's going to be kind of tight. But anyway, it's fine for now. So this is all we're going to do tonight. All that's left now is to... Uh, kind of bleed this, uh, bleed the master cylinder. We're just gonna bleed it right here with the little kit it comes with. Then we've just got these two little connectors right here to go into the distribution block. And then that's basically it. I need to get a new brake switch inside, put the clip back on, and then uh, we should be good to go. And then once we get the real lines, I guess we do gotta crack them and kind of bleed those or whatever, but pretty, I wouldn't say simple, pretty tedious, right? But uh, hopefully it doesn't leak and should be good to go. So that's it for today. I'll, uh, I'll probably start back on it tomorrow or during the week and we'll continue on with the video. All right, guys. So it's the next morning here. We've been working on this thing for, I don't know, 45 minutes. And uh, we finally kind of got it pretty much wrapped up as far as the mechanicals go on the master cylinder. So these getting, uh, getting these kind of lines to get straight and work with the distribution block, what a pain in the ass. When you say pops, what do you think? Yeah, we should have done it, put it on first. Yeah, so anyway, what we ended up kind of doing was loosening the master cylinder, loosening the two uh, screws that hold the, the uh, distribution block uh, in the air proportioning valve or whatever, and then just kind of wiggling it until we got it. So anyway, it should be good now so we can kind of button up the top. Now we've got to try to get the uh, all the you know electrical stuff back over. Probably I'm just going to leave all this stuff uncapped. The rotor setup should be shipping out tomorrow, supposedly. So I think I am going to replace the, the shocks or whatever. So there's no point to put it all back together as far as that goes. I'll just kind of wait. We'll do all the brakes. Then we can kind of bleed everything. And then we should be good to go in the next week or so. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I'll shoot you guys another update in a week or so once the actual calipers and pads and all that stuff come in. But uh, that's it. Hopefully we can get out, go to a car show today, enjoy the weather. It looks like it's going to be beautiful out here in Michigan. So take care, guys. Click that like and subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.